intermediate accounting, part 22 effective interest rate at a premium. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of Singlist Test Preparation. Here's our email. And a simpler version for bond accounting can be found on our intermediate accounting three through six videos. I like to describe the effective interest rate as calculating the total return on a bond. And if you can think of yourself as a bond investor, there's two types of profit you can get from owning your bond. The first is you get interest income on a corporate bond almost always semi-annually. That's one return. But the other is that you may have paid more or less than par, which is $1,000 usually. If you paid less than par, less than $1,000, you always get $1,000 back, which is the face amount of maturity, you'd have a gain. If you paid more than par or $1,000 and you only get $1,000 back at maturity, you'd have a loss. So we'd have to calculate a gain or a loss along with the investment income interest income, excuse me. So in order to calculate that total return, a more precise way of doing it is called the effective interest rate. And a new term that we're going to bring up is called carrying amount, which refers to the dollar value of the bond that's going to be on the balance sheet of the investor if they buy a bond. And that carrying amount is going to be adjusted up or down depending on whether you bought the bond at a premium or a discount. So I flipped over to Excel here and you can see that we have an amortization schedule. And if you look over in column E you'll see the carrying value of the bond. And we can see that it starts this time at a higher amount, an amount higher than par. It starts at something over a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. And as the years go on we amortize our way down, back down, $200,000, which is the face amount of the bond. The difference between $100,000 and the carrying value is our premium. We start off with $4,100 and each year we amortize that premium so that at the end, at maturity, that premium is down to zero and that carrying value is back down to $100,000 and that's what we say here in this line about year 10. So we're buying a $100,000 bond with an interest rate stated on the face of the bond at 4.5%. So multiplying that by $100,000, which is this cell, we get $4,500 a year in interest income. So now we're going to calculate what I would call our total return using the effective, effective interest rate. Another term that we need to know in order to do that is there's a phrase at the top of the Excel sheet I'm going to go back to that says purchase to yield. And the fact is, is that most bonds are not purchased at par or $1,000. They have a market price that fluctuates just like any other asset. Therefore, when we say yield, what we really mean is the yield to maturity or the total return. So I'm saying it below the interest expense column here, quote, purchase to yield 4%. 4% is less than the stated interest rate. And the reason that it's less is that we are paying a premium for this $100,000 bond. So in terms of journal entries, the first thing we do when we buy the bond is we recognize a bond investment for the face amount, $100,000. We pay cash of 104100 which is our carrying value at, year, at the beginning in year zero. And the difference to make the entry balance is $4,100, the premium on the bond. Each year our interest payment that we're going to get in our pocket is $4,500. But the key to the effective interest rate is this column. Because what you can see is we're taking our carrying amount of $104,100 and we're multiplying it by that purchase to yield, that yield to maturity of 4%, and we're coming up with 4164 as our interest expense, or in this case, if you're the investor, the income. And we notice that that interest income, if you're the investor, is lower than the interest payment, and that difference of 336 in year one is the amount of premium we're going to amortize. So it should make sense that at a yield of 4%, 
our interest income is less than $4,500. So subtracting this year's amortization from the total premium, we get $3,764. And the final calculation is, if we take our $100,000, our original face amount, and we add the unamortized premium, we get the carrying value for each for the next year. You can see in year two here, 3414, we get 100,000, and on down. So again, the unamortized premium will go down to zero, and the carrying value will go down to $100,000. In our first year, that 336 that we saw as the amortization year one right here, our journal entry for that amount that we recognize on the investor's books. Remember that we debited the entire premium amount in year zero when we bought the bond. After one year's amortization, we're going to credit that account to remove it, and we're going to recognize bond expense. So all of this amortization represents expense which is why our purchase to yield, our yield to maturity, is lower than the stated interest rate. So in terms of a T account, what's happening is, in year one, when we purchase the bond, we have a $4,100 debit for the premium on bond payable, which matches our journal entry up here. Each year thereafter, we are crediting credit, 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 all the way down. So that at the end, eventually, the entire premium is posted to an expense on the investor's books. That's the end of part 22. You'll find a complete three-hour course, Essential Topics and Cost Accounting. Uh, if you go to this link to a video on YouTube, the entire three-hour course is explained that we teach using GoToMeeting.com. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. You can find a complete list of our videos on the website, stltest.net. We also do live tutoring and chat sessions one-on-one. -on -one. Here's our email address and our phone number, and we'll see you next time.